Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Wait a second. Oh, wow. Wait a second. So, what do you use to stop spam on your end? Spam assess. From, uh, it's from the people that make Apache, the web server. Yeah. It's called spam assess. Uh, basically, it's uh, written in Perl, so, and it can, so it can run on any operating system. And you can actually either use it uh, like on your PC, and you set it up with like a, a proxy, so you, you tell your mail client to connect to the proxy and then do your mail server, and spam up assassin can mark or delete the email as it comes through. Or you can run it on your server or on a gateway between the internet and your server on a separate computer. Well, how easy way you want to set it up. for Spam Assassin? I know a lot of people install it on the server level, but is there a package that's available for yeah. just regular users to download and run on their desktop? Something like a mail washer? Um, I, I, I think there is uh, on their website. There's a bunch of links because it's open source. A bunch of people have made commercial products out of it. Yeah, I think there's like a, I see RPM, Red Hat, Gen2, BSD, Debian. Right, but that, that's that's for distribution of the core package. The core, yeah. Actually, there's products that have been built out of it. I think some of them might be great for filtering your email again. Sweet. Yeah, I was using um, Spam Bays for Outlook, mm -hmm. which works outside of Outlook as well. Which, uh, yeah, uh, Spam Assassin has the Bayesian filters built yep. in and uh, auto waitlisting, uh, connection to all the, like, the different. Uh, DNS blacklists and stuff, but basically what makes Spam Assassin work so well is it's based on a score and it's basically using four or five indicators uh, to that this is spam instead of just one or two, so you get almost zero false positives because it's like the, the, you can tell that it wasn't sent from Outlook, it was sent from a, a spam mailing, a mass mailing application, It uh, the date is wrong, the subject is funny, and the in the body it says, you know, click here to get removed from our mailing list because we don't spam or whatever. It's well, like, if it's worded this way, then it actually is spam. The issue I've always mm -hmm. had with server-side spam filtering, whether it's Spam Assassin or anything else, is, you know, you you may be able to get it tweaked down to, like, no false positives, um, but, you know, if the interface is unusable, it's very difficult to deal with. And when we moved over to Rackspace right. for managed exchange, they're using AppRiver for their spam filter, the spam yeah. lab or whatever. And I'm looking at the stats yeah. here. Uh, the domain mode is closed. Um, we have block yeah. network traffic, 36,431, and it's been less than a month. Uh, that, that's how many yeah. spams or mails were blocked. Percentage of the mail blocked, 95%. Yes, isn't that ridiculous? 95%. Oh. And I, going through it, there have been false positives. I have issues with the application that I've written about before. In fact, one of their lead project managers kind of got mad at me. He says, why would you blog about this? You know, there's better channels for you to give us product feedback and tell us. It's like, well, yes. that wasn't my point. I, I, was, I was blogging to complain just See, to complain. What I... Because I'm hosting so many customers and I don't want to deal with that issue right there, what I've, the default configuration for our Spam Assassin is to change the subject of the email to include five stars, the word spam and five stars, and then the original subject. So that it makes it really easy for you to write a filter for your Outlook or whatever to automatically get rid of it or whatever. But it doesn't automatically do anything to your email unless you ask it to. Yeah. So it flags the email for you. But then it's up to you to decide if you want. You can tell it to automatically delete the spam if you want, but you have to tell it what you want it to do. Well, so and that's up to the user. That's one of the things we that have a nice I've interface where you, they can set their spam score and they can do their their threshold. Practice. You know, I've got you know the ability to do that on here. I scaled it back. The rules I thought were a little too tough. There were too many. Um, newsletter publishers that just had really bad headers, and because of that, they were going into the spam filter outright. Yeah. Because it, it was just it wasn't it, they weren't getting. Because the bulk mailing software is the same for spammers as it is for newsletter writers. Yep. Yep. They all have the same signatures, and it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. 
Unbelievable. It's also very hard for ISPs to decide when, when they're starting to get complaints, is this person of the legitimate mailing list and they're just getting a couple of complaints, or are they a spammer and these are the start of a flood of complaints and we should shut them down before they can send more spam. Now, what do you use, Wireless Packet? Um, not, I don't really use any really sp anti-spam software, to be honest. Um, I just... Well, how long, how long have you had WirelessPacket.com? Uh, wirelesspacket.org has been around nine months, but I really haven't used any of those email addresses yet. Oh. Wirelesspacket at gmail.com has been getting more spam as of late. So, I was. Well, then you use Gmail's anti spam there. Yes. yes. Which was so even more difficult to manage. Gmail spam filter it, it, was even it worse. Is. It was hard. I mean, I like, you can't manage it easily. No, I, I didn't even know that you could manage it at all. <laughs> you can't. Right, right now, I'm older than, than like saying this is spam and this isn't spam, and it learns or whatever. Yeah. Right now, I'm actually looking on uh, the uh, for the, a spam assassin client. I suppose is there one uh, Thor, at all? For, like, uh, I've never really used it, but I'm pretty sure there are commercial products based on spam assassin that run on your PC. Okay. Because I see one now called SA Win32 Spam Assassin for Win32. Um, yeah, that's what so it sounds. Like, sounds like a yeah. Way. Basically, what it'll do is run the mail between your client and the mail server and flag it with Spam Assassin. Okay. Which helps a lot. Every little thing like that you can do. I've seen a lot of different solutions, like uh, a local ISP here that my grandparents have. We have like a trap where the spam basically gets sent to a second inbox that the people have, and then once a week they get a, an email with a summary of the spam that they got. And then they yep, can, I get one of those every day. Check it. That's you know that's one thing and I'll give can. App River. I get an email every day. It's not sorted, but the nice thing is is when I go to App River, to I can sort by country of origin and can pretty much eliminate that most helps of it. A lot. Oh yeah. I basically uh, I look at spam assassin. Actually, you can actually set rules based on uh, the country of origin or uh, the language that the email is written in. That's nice. Right. Because I, I, I originally had it set for English only, and then one of my customers is Norwegian, and he had to get some email in Norwegian, and I had to change it. No oh, boy. I, I've been recently. I've been getting uh, like Russian and you know like mostly. Yes, but that, that part of the world, and it's mostly for it's in Cyrillic or in like uh, the Chinese character, Asian characters is like I can't even read this thing. Why See, yeah, and that, that's, that's you know, I wish there was an easier way. You can block countries, but that doesn't help. I wish there was a way to block, really. you know, and and you, Outlook does a fair job at this, like automatically blocking. A certain what what is the exact term they use? You can block by country. Outlook's junk mail tool is, I swear, so freaking crippled. Um, I mean, it's Microsoft trying to do its own thing, and it just, I, in my opinion, doesn't work well at all. Um, they you can block international TLDs, top level domain, and then blocked encodings. So on the blocked encodings, I've blocked everything other than Western European and U.S. ASCII. Those and everything else is just automatically right. gone. The problem is because most people wouldn't even have the font for the Chinese spam. They usually send it as the image spam. Yep. And so oh, yeah, that's, that's the, the filter doesn't the the filter doesn't catch that. Now, now the image spam was a big problem with the spam assassin, but the, the the updated version does a very good job of dealing with it. They basically managed to to get some signatures of what the difference is between an image spam and spam that has yeah, or, or a regular email that also has an image in it. But they they've been getting the, the people who are spending sending these spams out are getting really slick with like the animated gifs and, and all yeah. that stuff. And it's just like, you know, how do you block that stuff? You know, it's just it's yeah. getting kind of complicated. It, it's a really a, a finally good thing that most email clients now don't automatically load pictures. Mm -hmm. Because those were used actually to tell if an email address was active or not, and uh, like I've actually seen them use where uh, it's, it hooks up into dynamic images, so that actually as you like load the, the mortgage spam, it actually using your IP address it like guesses your zip code, and then tries to, it's like we'll give you a mortgage, and then it's like you know the, the neighborhood you live in. 
Now, see, that is that's so that's so cool. Why do ass burger type people? Sorry, I try to save myself. When I go to like, yes, but whenever I go to like certain websites you see like the the ads for dating sites you know like the meet or date hot people in kitchener because that's the city name that shows up for my isp i think that's so interesting like, that if i go to like mm. I, even youtube some of the ads will actually say kitchener on them somewhere just because that's the address that my ip address gives off or the city name that my ip address gives off well, certainly, I'm always on the lookout for better. I'm, you know, lo always looking for better ways of scrubbing spam. I think, though, for the for the foreseeable future, I think all the spam blocking is going to happen on the server level. I mean, even Google just acquired Postini, which I it's used just, years makes, ago. It makes a lot more sense. But it's, it makes a lot more sense to try to do it on the server level because um, you can basically when you're doing a bulk amount of email, you can find patterns a lot faster. Yep. Now, Chris, the, the exchange server that you're on now, is all this to spam filtering being done on their end, right? Well, they're ex what Rackspace does, they don't actually have their own tools. They, they, they kind of outsource their tools to other providers. They just handle a lot of the support. So, basically, they went, yeah. they're using AppRiver, um, and so I, I, I really have no choice. I can't, I wish I could choose between software that they supported. Unfortunately, I have to go through mm -hmm. what they've chosen as a provider. I don't think... App they've trained all their people on. Yeah, well, but the problem is is that it may not be the best tool out there. And I, at, at, it, they yeah. should have given me a choice. AppRiver has done, I'll give them this, it has done a, a really good job at getting most everything. What always annoys me is not being able to flag the false positives and say, hey, you know, whitelist this or, you know, this this is fine. Yeah, it's not all... See, another, another issue with spam filtering is you can... I can't say this address is okay because it can be Joe Job. There's no whitelist? No, no, no. You can whitelist, but, like, in Outlook, if I say, yes, right. the sender is okay or the sender's domain is okay, well, as soon as some spammer uses that domain or that email address, which anybody yeah. can do because there's no authentication for she, email... She the worst part about those... It's a dumbass there's, idea. There's a framework for that. There, there's two different frameworks for uh, proving the, the who owns the domain. There's the Microsoft supported one called SPF or Sender Policy Framework, which is basically a DNS record you add with basically a list of IP addresses that are allowed to send email from your domain. And if any other IP address sends it, then it's supposed to be you know automatically flagged as spam or suspicious. And then the, the Yahoo supported one is called Domain Keys. And basically what that is, is you actually, the mail server actually signs all email that goes out. So any email that's not signed would be like this suspicious. Yeah, but I've, uh, I've set up out, like, yeah, but I've set up Outlook to automatically, by, like, but I've had, I've added headers in Outlook to say, to keep it out of the, the, the spam filter, but emails from me still go into my junk email folder. So, uh, well, again, it's a Microsoft thing. I, I don't. I, I, that that's my the, problem. The, the worst part is uh, when you're saying about the, the Joe job and people sending spam from a domain that they don't own to get past the to, to you to abuse the whitelist and stuff, is that they send spam to addresses that don't exist, and then so they're sending spam from my domain, and I end up with getting like ten thousand error messages in my inbox. Yep. For them sending spam to domains that don't exist, or people who are out of the office for a week, or whose inboxes are so full that their email server is rejected. So I end up getting like 10,000 spam error messages. So wait, you're getting spam from spam? Basically, I'm, I'm getting the bounce errors from wow. sending spam pretending to come from my domain. Well, see, my problem oh, is lovely. that I put my email address out there, I, chris at perillo.com, knowing that it's going to get spammed. But hoping that you know most the yeah. uh, most of the people that are are going to use it, I'll, I'll be able to. I mean, the legitimate users will actually get through. Hoping that the spam filtering will be good. Legitimate stuff will actually get through. Yeah. I'm hoping. The worst part is at one point I had the, the my 
like SMS address on my website so that people could see oh, no. have, like an email to Rex Gateway Bank. And now, so I get like spam on my cell phone. Oh you know? no, I never, ever, ever. Way I... to go, no, no. Oh wow. Hey, Kat. But it was all like obfuscated and everything. I don't know. Uh, I've been here all along, Lenny. Oh, yeah. She's been working. I know she's been working. I'm kind of quiet because this, the spam thing to me is a little, you know, it's a little foreign, but I'm learning a well, lot. Well, exactly. I don't, it, that's I just it. I don't do it. server stuff and all that. Well, it's not so much no. server stuff. A lot of people. I have two websites. Right, but a lot of people just download a program, a spam program, and use that. Whether it's Mail Washer, whether they use the built-in tool that's integrated inside their uh, client, whether it's Thunderbird, whether it's Outlook, Outlook Express, Windows Live Mail, whatever it happens to be. They never, no one ever really deals with the server side of things unless their ISP offers it. Or, yeah. or worse yet, this is my frustration: dealing with an ISP that's blocking mail, but not telling their users that they're blocking mail. That the email, exactly. I think you, you a couple of that's years why my policy was to use the, the flag and yeah. let the user decide. Let the user decide. Yep. I, think, I think a couple a couple of your users, Chris, like they emailed you saying that they, they weren't getting your newsletter. Yep, I get it all the time. They block. It's it's vigilante. Kind of nice you know. uh, um, uh, Spam Assassin has a feature called Auto Whitelist, where basically if it gets if you like basically once a week get a, a newsletter. And it gets through. Then, uh, if one of them happens that they have certain keywords, like if for some reason you mentioned Viagra in the newsletter or something, and if it manages to actually get marked as spam, the auto whitelist will say, "Well, this one norm normally isn't spam, so maybe this is a false positive." And it reduces the score. And then only if it was really bad would it still not get through. Yeah. It's a never-ending battle, and well, I, it just seems to be getting worse, not better.